what I have learned as a mathematician is that the easy answers are usually not the right ones. So if we talk about mathematics, and again, uh, if we talk about uh, real mathematics, the kind of stuff that people like me do on a daily basis, and unfortunately we keep most of it locked away from others. So I'm trying to open the doors and I'm trying to help others to see, to enter these museums of knowledge and beauty, which is what mathematics is about. When someone gets exposed to this stuff, and not the boring and lifeless things which people are terrified of when they got to, are forced to, to study at school, then you realize that a lot of it actually, number one, have no obvious connection to physical reality, to kind of consensual physical reality that, you know, things around us. A lot of it does, of course. You know, I have ten fingers, so I can count. So yes, the numbers I realize manifested in physical reality. But there are things in mathematics, which are much more, much more sophisticated, much more, much far, farther removed, I would say, from physical reality. There are numerical systems which are not realized anywhere. There are infinite dimensional spaces which are not realized anywhere. We don't see them. So where are they? Well, there are some who say that we humans invent this stuff like elaborate pieces of fiction in a kind of a game, like a game of chess. But I don't believe that to be the case. There are several reasons for that. And, uh, well, first of all, if that were so, we would be completely free to invent the, the rules of the game. We would be completely free to change the rules of the game. We would be and, and different people would play different games. But there's only one mathematics, as far as we can tell. We all study at school Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras came up with this theorem 2,500 years ago. And in fact, there is evidence that in other cultures, in China and Babylon, mathematicians had discovered the same theorem even earlier. But let's just say Pythagoras, 2,500 years ago. I don't know much about Pythagoras. I don't know what he, what he ate, where he lived, how he felt. But I know that what Pythagoras' theorem meant to him is exactly the same that it means to me. And Later on, others could discover the same thing, but it would be exactly the same thing. So this kind of knowledge, it shows us that this kind of knowledge is timeless, is eternal, is unchanging. So that's very special because, for example, our physical theories change all the time. We had Newtonian mechanics, which we thought was so powerful and so beautiful, and it described so many, almost everything we knew at the time. And it, it was very tempting to say that this is a final theory of physics, but of course now we know that that's not the case. Einstein's relativity theory sort of turned Newtonian mechanics on its head. And there is no reason to believe that Einstein's special relativity, say, is a final word. The, the theories will be updated. But Pythagoras' theorem will not get updated. It means the same thing to everyone in the world today and will mean the same thing a thousand years ago. So that's one argument that you can make. There are more elaborate arguments. The great logician Kurt Gödel, who, uh, you know, one of the giants, of mathematics of the 20th century, I would maybe say one of, you know, really one or two of the most important people uh, in mathematics of the 20th century. He actually gave a mathematical argument why it would be impossible for, for us to say, you know, for mathematics to be invented. There are certain very important uh, properties of mathematical knowledge that he had discovered and which we now understand even better uh, today, uh, which show that that is impossible. That is an impossibility. Um, it's almost like, it's almost like you, are, you are trying to build something. If you build something, let's suppose you want to build a ship, okay? So, of course, you make a ship and you don't know exactly how it will move, which way it will go, how exactly it will float, and so on. So that's okay, that's normal. You can still say, well, you, you, you built it, you created it. But imagine you're building a ship, and then suddenly it turns out to be an airplane. So, how can you claim... <laughs> that you created it, you know? So that's what, more or less, this, as a sort of rough analogy, where we are with mathematics. It's so much different from the kind of things that we can create or invent. So that points to an alternative, which is that mathematics lives in a world of its own, in a kind of platonic reality. And of course, Plato was one of the first philosophers to theorize that there are certain things which exist outside of space and time and outside of what we usually call physical reality. And so, mathematics, if so, then we actually discover mathematics. So Pythagoras discovered Pythagoras' theorem, did not invent it. 
So we discover them by these results, these ideas, these theorems, equations, by tapping into this magical world of mathematics. That's why I think it's so important for, for all of us to realize that it exists. And it's kind of the irony, the paradox is that most people think mathematics is the most boring subject. But in fact, I think it's a portal. It's a portal into hidden reality. Because if mathematics exists outside of space and time and outside of logic, what else is out there? 